The Oerlikon 20 mm cannon is a series of water cannons, based on an original German 20mm Becker design that appeared very early in World War I. It was widely produced by Oerlikon Contrives and others, with various models employed by both Allied and Axis forces during World War II, and many versions still in use today. History, Origins, During World War I, the German Reinhold Becker developed a 20mm calibre cannon, known now as the 20mm Becker using the advanced primer ignition blowback method of operation. This used a 20x70 RB cartridge and had a cyclic rate of fire of 300 RPMs. It was used on a limited scale as an aircraft gun on Luftstreet at concurrency FTE warplanes, and an anti-aircraft gun towards the end of that war. Because the Treaty of Versailles banned further production of such weapons in Germany, the patents and design works were transferred in 1919 to the Swiss firm SEMAG based near Zar 1 Quarterich. SEMAG continued development of the weapon, and in 1924 had produced the SEMAGL, a heavier weapon that fired more powerful 20x100 RB ammunition at a slightly higher rate of fire, 350 RPMs. In 1924 SEMAG failed. The Oerlikon firm, named after the Tsar one quarter rich suburb where it was based, then acquired all rights to the weapon, plus the manufacturing equipment and the employees of SEMAG, Oerlikon. In 1927 the Oerlikon S was added to the existing product line. This fired a still larger cartridge to achieve a muzzle velocity of 830 AMS at the cost of increased weight and a reduced rate of fire. The purpose of this development was to improve the performance of the gun as an anti-tank and anti-aircraft weapon, which required a higher muzzle velocity. An improved version known as the 1S followed in 1930. Three sizes of gun with their different ammunition and barrel length, but very similar mechanisms, continued to be developed in parallel. In 1930 Oerlikon reconsidered the application of its gun in aircraft and introduced the AF and AL, designed to be used in flexible mounts, that is manually aimed by a gunner. The 15-round box magazine used by earlier versions of the gun was replaced by drum magazine holding 15 or 30 rounds. In 1935 it made an important step by introducing a series of guns designed to be mounted in or on the wings of fighter aircraft. Designated with FF for FLA one quarter gelfist meaning wing mounted, these weapons were again available in the three sizes, with designations FF, FFL and FFS. The FF fired a slightly larger cartridge than the AF, 20x72 AB, but the major improvement in these weapons was a significant increase in rate of fire. The FF weighed 24 a kg and achieved a muzzle velocity of 550 to 600 AMS with a rate of fire of 520 RPMs. The FFL of 30 a kg fired a projectile at a muzzle velocity of 675 AMS with a rate of fire of 500 RPMs. And the FFS, which weighed 39 a kg, delivered a high muzzle velocity of 830 AMS at a rate of fire of 470 RPMs. Apart from changes to the design of the guns for wing mounting and remote control, larger drums were introduced as it would not be possible to exchange magazines in flight. For the FF series drum sizes of 45, 60, 75 and 100 rounds were available, but most users chose the 60 round drum. The 1930s were a period of global rearmament, and a number of foreign firms took licenses for the Oerlikon family of aircraft cannon. In France, Hispano Sizer manufactured development of the FFS as the Hispano Sizer HS7 and Hispano Sizer HS9, for installation between the cylinder banks of its V12 engines. In Germany, Icaria further developed the FF gun as the MGFF, firing 20x80 RB ammunition. And the Imperial Japanese Navy, after evaluating all three guns, ordered developments of the FF and FFL as the Type 99-1 and Type 99-2. The incorporation of the improvements of the FFS in a new anti-aircraft gun produced, in 1938, the Oerlikon SS. Oerlikon realized further improvements in rate of fire on the 1SS of 1942, and the 2SS of 1945 which achieved 650 RPMs. However, it was the original SS gun which was widely adopted as anti-aircraft gun, 
being especially widely used by Allied navies during World War II. This gun used a 400 grain charge of IM A4831 smokeless powder to propel a 2000 grain projectile at 2,800 feet per second. World War II The Oerlikon FF was installed as armament on some fighters of the 1930s, such as the Polish PZL Pages 24G. Locally produced derivatives of the Oerlikon cannon were used much more extensively, on aircraft, on ships and on land. In the air, the Icaria MGFF was used as armament on a number of German aircraft, of which the most famous is the Messerschmitt Bf 109. The Japanese similarly used the Type 99 cannon on a number of types including the Mitsubishi A6M0. The French firm of Hispano Sizo was a manufacturer of aircraft engines, and it marketed the motor cannon combination of its 12X and 12Y engines with HS7 or HS. 9 cannon installed between the cylinder banks. The gun fired through the hollow propeller hub, this being elevated above the crankcase by the design of the gearing. Such armament was installed on the Marine Solnier MS-406 and some other types. Similar German installations of the MGFF were not successful. The Oerlikon became best known in its naval applications. Initially the Oerlikon was not looked upon favorably by the Royal Navy as a short-range anti-aircraft gun. All through 1937 to 1938 Lord Louis Mountbatten, then a captain in the Royal Navy, waged a lone campaign within the Royal Navy to set up an unprejudiced trial for the Oerlikon 20 on gun, but it was all in vain. It was not until the Commander-in-Chief of the Home Fleet, Admiral Sir Roger Backhouse, was appointed First Sea Lord that Mountbatten's efforts bore fruit. During the first half of 1939 a contract for 1,500 guns was placed in Switzerland. However, due to delays and then later the fall of France in June 1940 only 109 guns reached the United Kingdom. All Oerlikon guns imported from Switzerland in 1940 were mounted on various gun carriages to serve as light AA guns on land. Just a few weeks before the fall of France, the Oerlikon factory approved manufacture of their gun in the United Kingdom, under license. The Royal Navy managed to smuggle out the necessary drawings and documents from Tsar One Quarter Rich. The production of the first British-made Oerlikon gun started in Ruislip, London, at the end of 1940. And the first guns were delivered to the Royal Navy in March or April, 1941. The Oerlikon gun was fielded in United States Navy ships starting in 1942, replacing the M2 Browning machine gun, which lacked range and firepower. It became famous in the naval anti-aircraft role, providing an effective defense at short ranges at which heavier guns had difficulty tracking a target. The gun was eventually abandoned as a major anti-air weapon due to its lack of stopping power against heavy aircraft and against Japanese kamikaze attacks during the Pacific War. It was largely superseded by the Beaufort's 40mm gun and the 3 inches 70 Mark 26 gun. It did, however, provide a useful increase in firepower over the .50 Colouris machine gun when adapted and fitted to some aircraft. However, it had some problems with jamming in the ammunition feed. The Royal Canadian Navy popularized the use of the Oerlikon gun as an anti-ship and anti-submarine gun. While it was not effective against the armor of most larger ships, it was used extensively and effectively against U-boats, and on the decks of larger ships. A handful of corvettes were fitted with the weapon toward the end of the war, but it appeared more commonly on frigates and destroyers at the time. The Oerlikon was also used as the basis for the Polson gun, designed by Polish engineers in exile in the United Kingdom. The gun went into service in 1944 and was used well into the 1950s for, among other uses, on Cromwell tanks and early model Centurion tanks. Post-war, it is still in use today on some naval units, theoretically as a last recourse anti-air weapon, but mainly used for firing warning shots or incapacitating small vessels. Description The Oerlikon cannon and its derivatives feature blowback operation, the bolt is not locked to the breech of the gun on the moment of fire but moves freely to the rear while the propellant gases propel the projectile forward. 
advanced primer ignition is used to make sure that the projectile has left the muzzle and the gas pressure in the barrel is down to a safe level before the breech opens, the firing pin strikes the primer while the bolt is still traveling forward so that the gas pressure first has to overcome the forward momentum of the bolt before it can push it to the rear. To give the heavy bolt sufficient forward speed, a large spring is required, which is wrapped around the barrel of the gun. Also, the chamber is longer than needed to contain the case, so that the bolt and case must travel a small distance to the rear before the case extends beyond the face of the chamber. Nevertheless a fairly heavy bolt must be used, which limits the rate of fire. This design resulted in the use of a characteristically shaped cartridge, the case has straight sides, very little neck, and a rebated rim. The straight sides allows the case to slide back and forward in the cylindrical chamber. The neck is not supported while this happens and therefore expands when the case is fired, and the rebated rim allows the face of the bolt, with its extractor claw hooked over the rim, to fit within the chamber. To ease the motion of the case, the ammunition needed to be greased, which was a drawback of the Oerlikon cannon. An alternative developed during World War II was the so-called fluted chamber, which had grooves that allowed gun gas to seep between the chamber wall and the case, taking over the role of the grease. Ammunition feed is typically by a 60-round drum magazine on the top of the gun. During sustained firing, the magazine must be frequently changed, reducing the effective rate of fire. Belt-fed versions of the gun were developed to overcome this limitation. A trigger in the right-hand grip controls fire. Used cartridges are ejected from below the breech. Different nations and services operated a number of mounting types for the same basic gun. In a typical single-barrel naval version, it is free-swinging on a fixed pedestal mounting with a flat-armored shield affording some protection for the crew. The cannon is aimed and fired by a gunner using, in its simplest form, a ring and bead sight. The gunner is attached to the weapon by a waist belt and shoulder supports. For this reason, some mountings existed with a height adjustment feature to compensate for different sized gunners. A piece chief designates targets and the feeder changes exhausted magazines. During World War II, twin and quadruple Oerlikon mounts were developed, both for Army and for Navy use. The British Navy operated a hydraulically operated twin gun mount. The U.S. Navy operated a quad mount developed for PT boats, the Thunderbolt, which was manufactured by International Harvester. It was placed experimentally on the battleships Arkansas. Colorado, Maryland, West Virginia, Washington, Massachusetts, and training ship Wyoming. See also, 20mm Modela F2 gun, Hispano Sizer HS404, Oerlikon FF, MGFF cannon, Type 99 cannon, 25mm Hotchkiss anti aircraft gun, Type 96 25mm ATAA gun, 2cm Flak 30 Fluke Veerling, References Notes. Bibliography. External links, of Oerlikons and other things, includes links to a family tree diagram and pictures of cartridges. Navesource.org, VKPLVZ. 36-20mm Oerlikon and Czechoslovak Army.